The 1958 Edsel is one of the most unique cars in automotive history. And while it was a flop in the sales room and only lasted for three model years from 1958 to 1960, there are certainly many unique, strange, and crazy features about the 1958 Edsel that are worth talking about. Let's explore those now. The first thing to know about the 58 Edsel is that it really was the best branded car to come out of Detroit to date by that point. And what do I mean by that? Well, everywhere that you looked, there was some moniker or symbol that denoted Edsel or parts were Edsel specific. Let's examine some of those now. The first instance of these Edsel specific brandings can be seen in this photo on this 58 Edsel citation. There are two instances of this. The first is the reverse light that's just above the bumper and below the trunk cut line. There you can see it on the passenger side. And in the middle of it is an E that denotes Edsel. The second is on the body side here. You can see that there's the Edsel horse collar symbol to the left of the E in Edsel. And this is affectionately known as the pickle by some Edsel aficionados because in this case, the symbol is green. And it kind of has a dill spear pickle type shape to it. The next instance of this is the trim panel beneath the rear window in between those fin-like forms. You can see here it spells Edsel in block lettering. And even more distinctive Edsel features occur on the front end of the car, including the infamous horse collar grill here that spells Edsel in the middle of it. But there are also some beautifully subtle details, including this driver's side outside rearview mirror. Notice that the mirror support is shaped like the horse collar grill on the Edsel. And this is indeed an Edsel only part distinct from other cars in the Ford lineup for 1958. The beautiful Edsel-specific branding continues even on the inside of the car. And here, when you open the driver's door, you can see on the door card, there is a power window switch in this particular vehicle. Let's take a look at that up close. And here we are. It's a bank of four white Bakelite switches with, again, the E appearing above them in case you forgot what kind of car you're driving. Even the keys for this vehicle have the Edsel horse collar shape, as you can see here. Ford really spared no expense in reminding you what kind of car you were driving, that it was different from everything else that they produced. And the interior on this Edsel is also full of unique features. The first of which is these courtesy lights, which illuminate when you flick a switch on the dash and are on either side just in front of the driver and passenger, providing you some nice ambient light at night. You notice this car is equipped with power seats, and that's what that little switch is just in front of the courtesy light. That's for the power seat to move back and forth. An interesting position, I guess ergonomically perhaps better than being down on the side of the seat where it's hard to see what you're doing. In some cases, it's even hard to get your hand in there between the seat and the door so i've never seen a power seat in a car of this era placed in that type of a position before next is the one year only edsel teletouch transmission selector found in the middle of the steering wheel this would only last in the 1958 model year edsel would go to a conventional shifter in 1959 and for the 1960 model years and you push these buttons and they electrically activated a motor that would engage the various gears in the transmission. It proved a bit troublesome for Edsel owners. And in fact, there were some dealer service bulletins that say that you should shift from reverse to neutral, then neutral to drive, and the inverse for fear of burning the motor out in some cases if you didn't do that. So a good idea perhaps, but not necessarily one that was very well executed. You can see again that green pickle, the Edsel horse collar grill in the middle of the steering wheel. Edsel also had some interesting gauges and switch gear. Here on the left side of the steering column, you can see there's a tachometer in that far left pod. That was optional, and it's nicely integrated into the overall gauge pod. The fuel gauge is right next to it, and then you can see some toggle switches that are a white Bakelite the first is for your driving lights if you want to have parking lights on or your headlights on. The next button over is for the power antenna, which this car is equipped with. And then the final button is for the courtesy lights that I spoke of earlier. 
If you look to the far right, at the far right of the picture, just beneath the odometer, you can see this dial, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. That's the speed alert, an option that you could get on these Edsels. And it would illuminate a light in the speedometer if you pass that speed. I'll show you that function here now. Here's a better look at that speed alert. Again, you would twist this dial, and you can see it's got the miles per hour indicated to a speed that you didn't want to exceed. When you did that, the really cool Etzel speedometer, which you can see here and I believe is just a piece of art on its own. I haven't seen another car quite with a rolling drum speedometer like this. Others like the 66 Tornado and the 66 Buick Riviera did have rolling drum speedometers, but this one is just super cool. In any case, when you exceed the speed limit that you set on that speed alert setting, this speedometer glows red, as you can see here. If that isn't cool, I don't know what else is. I just think that's an amazingly cool feature of these Edsels. And that speedometer is right in your line of sight. So it's quite visible if you're exceeding the speed limit that you set on that speed alert dial. And to the right of the steering column, you have this bank of switches. You can see the left one is for the blower. The middle one is for the wipers. And the far right one is for the lighter. And this looks like a switch, but it's not. It's actually something that you can pull out and that's how you access the lighters, by pulling this Bakelite-looking switch out, which you can see here. I just thought this was so cleverly done and disguised in the instrument panel that it was definitely worth featuring. And we have the interesting rotary climate dial here. And by twisting this dial, you actually control everything on the climate control aside from the blower speed, which is handled by that Bakelite switch at the bottom left. But this changes the temperature, it changes where the air is coming out, if you need the defrost or not. It's very similar to the setup used on the 5859 Lincoln, where you had a switch that controlled all of the climate control functions, just one single control. But in that car, you pulled out that control for the blower speed. Here you have a separate blower switch to activate. You can also see the uniquely styled turn signal indicator at the right there. I thought Edsel did a neat job of integrating these into the overall dash. Lastly, let's move under hood where the Edsel branding continues, including on this washer reservoir. You can see it not only says Trico, but it also says Edsel windshield washer. I didn't know that Edsel had to brand their windshield washers, but they did. And they even branded the battery. I guess you needed a reminder every time you pop the engine compartment of what vehicle you bought. And here under hood in this particular Edsel citation, we have the E475 V8, which was 410 cubic inches. It's the MEL, Mercury Edsel Lincoln V8, same one that was used in Mercury Edsels and Lincolns, including the 430 cubic inch version in the Lincolns of this era, the Mark III. This E475 V8, was rated at 345 horsepower, and per its name, 475 pound-feet of torque. That's right, the numbers denoted the torque rating, similar to what Buick did during this era and later. And this engine was standard in the Edsel Corsair and the top-of-the-line Citation series. If you got the lower-end Edsel Ranger or Pacer, the engine was the E400 V8, which was a 361 cubic inch FE engine, and that made 303 horsepower and an eponymous 400 pound-feet of torque. And to close out one last crazy feature of these Edsel vehicles, let's turn to the station wagon, the Edsel Bermuda. Take a look at the tail lights here. So imagine if you put your left turn signal on, you can see that the left light would illuminate, but the arrow actually points in the opposing direction. So this confused drivers in terms of which direction you were headed when you put your turn signal on. It's kind of a neat styling feature, but certainly would be confusing for the person behind you. Hope you enjoyed this feature on the 1958 Edsels and some strange, cool, and quirky features. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, take care and check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you.